Hey Flower Tribe, it's Kelly Lehman and Lucy Lehman and today we want to take you on an April garden tour through the Secret Garden and I want to show you some of our beautiful flowering trees and I want to show you what the flower farm looks like at this time of year. If we haven't met yet, it's nice to meet you. My name is Kelly Lehman. I'm the owner of Cranberry Fields Flower Farm here in Cranberry, New Jersey. And I love giving you guys fun free flower tips. So please feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit the bell notification so you know whenever I post another fun free flower tip video. So let's dive right in. So here it is, it's April and we're having some of these really gorgeous, beautiful, like 65, 70 degree days. And then sometimes temps drop down to like 50 and 40 at night. So it's really like a roller coaster here. I'm not sure how your April's shaping up. Hopefully it's a little warmer than on the cooler side. But this is what some of our flowering trees look like this time of year. This gorgeous tree in back of me is called a weeping cherry. And it's a really, really beautiful tree. We planted this tree about maybe 15 years ago. And it almost reminds me of like a ballerina. So some of the blooms actually look like uh, they're, they're like almost like carnations. If you take a close up of some of these beautiful branches, I mean, they're just like this fluffy, gorgeous mix of gorgeousness. And a lot of times I'll take some of these branches and I'll just put them in a vase of water in the house and I'll have a huge, beautiful floral arrangement to brighten up my house. So that's just like a quick floral power tip. Today's cup of caffeine is from Karen. Karen, thank you so much for supporting my YouTube channel. It means a lot to me. And guys, if you're enjoying my content and would like to buy me a cup of coffee, you can check out the link in descriptions below. I may be giving you a shout out on my next video. This is what the Kwanzan cherry tree looks like, the one that's in the front of the farm. And it's just starting to lose all of its petals. You can see them on the ground by the trunk. And it looks like little fairy petals everywhere. Magical to watch this tree in the wind. This is also a great tree to lay underneath and just chill out and just have some Zen moments and just relax. Nothing like laying underneath the flowering tree. Of course, look who's here. So these are some gorgeous red tulips that came up beautifully this year. We have a fox family in the woods right now, and I think they kind of took care of the rabbit population, unfortunately. However, this is one of the first years that we had spectacular tulips come up because the rabbits didn't get a chance to get them. So this is what the inside of some of these tulips look like. This is what my peony rose look like. They have a lot of beautiful growth on them. And you could start to see some of the flower starting to get formed. I wanted to show you some of these flowering trees that I have in the secret garden. I'm going to do uh, like, a, like a, a shot from far away so you can kind of see the whole beauty of it when you walk back here. You can kind of see all the different bursts of color. And flowering trees give you a beautiful backdrop to your garden. So the one to the right is called a crab apple tree. And it has beautiful, beautiful, sweet smelling blossoms looks almost like a bride's dress. And then next to it over here, the next trees in the back, the one to the right is a Kwanzan cherry. And these have those gorgeous, beautiful carnation looking uh, flowers on them that are super fluffy. And then the one next to that is called the dogwood tree. Those also have beautiful soft petals on them. And dogwood trees come in all different colors they come in white and they come in pink in the back i've got a red bud tree which is actually purple so it's called red bud but it has beautiful deep purple blooms on them and then in the back back i have two beautiful weeping cherries that are like the queens of the back garden they're kind of faded now but in their glory they were bright bright pink and they've got those dramatic sweeping branches and in front of those two weeping cherries I've got a white lilac and I've got a purple lilac. And those are gonna be bursting with a lot more blooms in just a few weeks. And underneath here, I wanted to show you the new growth that's on my hellebores. I've showed you some of these hellebores before when they first started blooming uh, in the beginning of March. They're one of the first flowers to burst open in the garden, even before the daffodils. And they're so beautiful and they get larger every year. They come in all different colors and some of the petals are single, some of the petals are doubles. Here's a single. Okay. 
And the same thing with these guys, they get larger every single year. So all that green on the top is all new growth that came in this year. And it's just gonna make the flower even more spectacular next year. And here's my white lilac. This is what my Nico Hydrangea roll looks like right now. And the only thing I'm gonna do with these gals is to give them a little bit of a deadheading, but I'm definitely not gonna prune them back because all the blooms that come in on Nico Hydrangea come in on last year's old wood. So I'm gonna make sure that I don't prune her back. I'm just gonna get rid of some of these spent blossoms. I'm just gonna give it like a little bit of clip. And if I get too lazy and I don't even deadhead these, I'm still gonna get gorgeous, beautiful blooms from this plant. So make sure that if you're not sure what kind of hydrangea you have, make sure that you don't prune it the wrong way. And we've got a lot of double daffodils that came in, but we just had a ton of rain. So some of them got knocked to the ground. And I always say that double daffodils remind me of peonies because they've got these big, gorgeous, fluffy, fluffy centers. Aren't they spectacular? The problem is they get knocked to the ground the same way that peonies sometimes do. So I probably could have used uh, some sort of a support system. I always plant my daffodils in large groupings because I just love the way that looks. So what I'm gonna do is for the ones that kind of fell to the ground, I'm gonna kind of just tuck them in back of some of the other gals. Whoops, they're not being cooperative, sorry guys. And I'm gonna hope that some of the other stems will support them now. And speaking of my peonies, my peonies are coming up back here. I'm going to move some of this mulch away because you don't want to have mulch where the crown is. But I'm going to be super careful not to knock over these beautiful stems because each of these is going to be a peony flower. So I want to get that mulch out of there though because your mulch should always be like on the outside of your plant. It should never be like right in the middle and it should never be right up against the base. So let's pull all this back a bit. And then these are the single cups. These guys are kind of fizzling out. And as these guys fizzle out, the double daffies are gonna take over. And then once the double daffies fizzle out, then the peonies are gonna to start to come up. So when you're planting your garden, it's a good idea to think of bloom time because you wanna have a continual burst of color in your garden. So here's some more double daffies. Dutch Bulbs sends me a lot of these. So it's dutchbulbs.com and they send me gorgeous uh, daffodils and tulips and alliums. So they're a terrific company. This is not a sponsored video. I just want you to know that I do love their company. So this is a terrific double. Here's another double. And then next to it is a single daffodil. These are beautiful. Don't they look like a little, like almost like a little teacup? I've got some chairs here that I hide in back of this planter. And the reason the chairs are here is because we have dinner out here some nights. We'll just grab some quick food from the kitchen, grab some Coors Light, get some candles, and then we're pretty much all set. This is what my endless summer row looks like at this time of year. Some of you have seen my video, how to get more blooms from your hydrangea, and it gives you terrific tips on pruning them and how not to cut off the flowers by accident, which some people do when they prune uh, the plant at the wrong time of year. So I'll link that video at the end and I'll put it in descriptions below. And I wanted to show you that some of these hydrangeas got a little bit of winter zap. So that means that these buds were put in place last fall and then in April, I started getting this beautiful green growth. This was supposed to be the flower that was gonna come in in a couple weeks, but what happened was we had a really strong uh, frost. It got super cold, so it got zapped. And chances are this flower is not gonna come in, but I'm gonna wait because sometimes they surprise me. I'm gonna wait until like the middle of May, and if it still looks brown, I'm just gonna give it a little snip uh, give it a dead head, and then that's going to be the end of that. But every now and then I'm surprised. So be careful, uh, be, you know, as you're like coming in and looking at some of the plants, the stems that don't look so good. I know a lot of people wind up, you know, um, trying to go in and prune some of the things that look dead, but sometimes they're, they're just dormant. They're not quite dead yet. So give them a while. And the rule of thumb with Endless Summer and Nico Hydrangea is don't prune them back at all if you don't have to because most of those buds were, like I said, put in place in fall. I have a whole bunch of videos on hydrangea pruning that will also be linked in my hydrangea playlist at the end of this. So, but this is what it looks like now. 
And some of you have asked me what this hedge is in front of them. This is called a U, Y-E-W, and this is a beautiful low maintenance hedge to have. It looks really beautiful in front of hydrangeas, uh, but the deer do like to eat it. So you might want to wind up putting like a deer repellent on it. And this is the row that looks absolutely magnificent in spring. It has beautiful, gorgeous blue flowers. And it's one of my absolute favorite spots in the flower farm. But this is what it looks like now. Everything's kind of dormant, just coming through. Sometimes people will wrap their hydrangeas in a little bit of burlap. They'll put like burlap around the plant. They'll put three or four posts around the plant and then wrap burlap around it to protect it from that winter zap. And then when temps warm up during the day, they'll wind up removing that burlap. So that's just one suggestion for those of you that got winter zap or may experience winter zap. And then we've got a weeping willow right here. And this guy wasn't doing so great. We actually made a big blunder. I love showing you guys my garden blunders because we make so many of them. When we first transplanted this tree here from the nursery, we had a whole bunch of like wires around it to, to and rope to keep it uh, upright because it was kind of drooping. And what happens? What what happened is that we had all of these uh ropes and supports in place but we never cut them off so as the plant got much larger it wound up choking off the plant here so you could tell there's all little uh, areas in here and the plant wound, wound up almost like um we almost like strangled our plant so we had to make sure we came in here and i had a plant um someone from save a tree came in and i said hey why is this guy not doing so good he said well first of all you're strangling your tree because these ropes should have been cut off years ago and so we did that and hopefully it's going to come back stronger i wanted to show you what my annabelle hydrangea row looks like in april so these guys are just starting to come forth with their new growth. And within a few weeks, they're gonna wind up being a beautiful burst of white snowball loveliness. And what I did this year was I wound up uh, not pruning back the majority of these Annabelles. So I'm not a huge fan of pruning back hydrangeas. Most of the time the blooms will come in without you having to even prune them, but the deer got at these guys. So I wound up giving them uh, a pretty harsh pruning a few weeks ago, I went up taking uh, everything except about two feet from the plant. I left that intact. And what's going to happen, I think, with these Annabelle hydrangea is these guys that were not pruned back are probably going to have smaller heads. They're still going to come in absolutely gorgeous, but they're going to have a stronger base that's going to support those flowers. And then the flowers probably aren't going to wind up flopping to the ground so easily. And you can tell there's a ton of new growth coming from uh, the very base of the plant. And this is just going to support it. These guys have a little support system in place because I didn't prune it back all the way to the ground. I did leave those two feet still intact and it's going to help those new blooms. But these blooms are going to be colossal because when you prune back your hydrangeas, a lot of times you'll give the plant a recharge. And then the next time that it blooms, it usually winds up giving you larger flowers. Now, here's a great trick that I want to show you guys. In back of my Annabelle hydrangeas, I have a whole bunch of peonies planted. I love to have a continual burst of color in my garden. So what is going to happen is these gals are going to wind up blowing open into gorgeous, beautiful peony blooms in uh, probably the next two or three weeks. And once their blooms fade, then the Annabelle hydrangeas are gonna take over with their color. So I made sure that I didn't plant them too close because if they were planted too close, you would wind up getting a whole bunch of fungal issues. So I planted them at least originally, like when I first put them in, I planted them about four feet away from each other. And now the plants have gotten bigger, but they still have a lot of great space. And then here's the front patio. And we wound up removing a ton of azaleas and ilex uh, mountain hollies that were not doing very good here. We kind of moved them to the back garden. And now I have to come up with a plan. What am I going to plant here? I want to plant endless summers. So Sheldon's like, oh my gosh, how many hydrangeas are we going to have here? But I have to say, I have this vision in my head of these beautiful, blue, gorgeous hydrangeas growing along the front of this wall. I think that will look super. If you guys have a better idea or a different idea, let me know in comments below. Thank you so much for joining us in this video. And please come say hi to us over on our Cranberry Fields Instagram page and also on the new Kelly Lehman's Flower Tribe Facebook group. There's tons of gardeners checking in from all over the world on that Facebook group. And you guys are awesome because you're posting pictures of your own garden challenges and your successes. And you're asking tons of garden questions on that Facebook group. And you're answering each other. I love that. So our flower family is really getting together on that Facebook group. And please also join us over on our Pinterest page. 
and our Patreon page in case you're interested in becoming a supporter of this YouTube channel. And please let me know where you're viewing this from in this great, big, beautiful world. I love to see how our flower tribe is growing around the globe each week. And I will see you in the next video.